Today, what we're going to cover is an updated f flyover update, uh, a schedule update, uh, some follow-up questions to one that was left over on Friday. Then we'll get into the daily stats, John, and then answer any of the questions that came in either this morning or will come in over live chat. So um, as you have seen, as reported uh, by almost all of you, the flyover is rescheduled for today. We are looking forward to it. We will have a camera on top of the Bryan West campus. Um, I know it's going to it's estimating to fly over the Bryan East campus at uh, 239 and the West campus at 240. Shortly after that, you'll have your closest view of a flyover maybe ever posted on our social channels. A little bit about the schedule update. Um, we've been following a, a pretty prescribed manual that was put out by the CDC and the government uh, some time ago. Um, and it's been a template that we used going into this. Um, and in a crisis situation, there's a couple of different phases. There's a pre-planning phase. We've shared much um, of what we did with our command center when we stood it up to get ready for this, dating back as early as January of this year. Um, certainly that structure was in place long before that. And then there's the in initial phase. And I think we've probably busted out of that initial phase. And we're entering a phase called the maintenance phase. It's a long one. It's still going to be important to be transparent and honest, uh, speak with empathy. Uh, but it's also a long period where, you know, there's going to be some heightened emotional responses to this, different public uh, opinions on different things. It's going to impact different communities and individuals differently. Um, so with that, because of the duration, um, I think our role and the media's role um, and each individual's role is really important to stay factual and um, and, and so forth. But what we're also going to do as we enter this, uh, next week after Memorial Day, we're going to drop these press briefings to three days a week. The first one will be uh, on Tuesday following Memorial Day, and then Wednesday, Friday, and then they will go Monday, Wednesday, Friday, as long as um, need be. Um, a lot of this isn't set in stone. If uh, circumstances dictate we need to come back more frequently, we would. And then also during this week, uh, I'm speaking not to the people following on Facebook, but members of the media, please give us your feedback. Uh, basically what we're thinking of at this point is on Tuesdays and Thursdays, there will be a press release with the daily statistics uh, go out and also a call for uh, questions or presenters that you might want uh, based on stories that you're working on. And, uh, and then we'll present those on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And Tuesday and Wednesday, use it as kind of that information gathering and getting you out basic information. Uh, we are still going to use this forum as the primary one for access to staff and physicians during this. Just because we're going into the maintenance period doesn't mean their time is freed up. Um, it, it is probably to the contrary. Um, I think that's it. So uh, we'll go Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday after Memorial Day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday after that. Uh, with a Tuesday, Thursday press briefing and announcement uh, via uh, a press release. Uh, there was one follow-up question or follow-up to a question asked on Friday. No, we are not using hydroxychloroquine. We have not used that, you know, since the very early days. Uh, Dr. Trapp was here in the first couple of weeks where it was tested in some really extreme cases, but uh, it is not being used at Bryan. Uh, the convalescent plasma is the preferred route um, from studies that have taken place and what our staff is using here. Um, right to the stats before John. Um, our midnight census is 403. We have now tested 7,354 people at Bryan Entities. Our positives have grown to 996, and there are 135 testing, which is down. So obviously, we got our test results in on, on, on many that had piled up for you know the two, three day period before the weekend. So anyway, with that, I'll give you John Woodrich, pres President and CEO of Bryan Medical Center. Thanks, Bob. And as Bob stated, we were really pleased that our number of uh, pending results have really come down. So we had uh, about 1,386 results come back just over the weekend. Um, we had 188 of those uh, were positive. So just to give you the ratios right now, so through our drive-through, we're ending up with a 12.7% positive rate through the hospital when people present here. It's a 12.7% positive rate. At our urgent care, it's an 11.2% positive rate. And then at our mobile facilities, which we go to specific locations, is at a 26.9% positive rate. 
positive rate. So overall, we're at about 13.8% as a positive rate. We do have 28 individuals that are in the hospital currently that have tested positive. We have eight individuals that are pending their results that are inpatients. Uh, 11 of those individuals are on vents right now. 11 are in our ICU. Five are in our progressive care unit. And 12 is in our general care unit. As you heard last week, we did open up or loosen up our uh, elective surgeries to where we're taking uh, individuals that have no longer than a two night length of stay. And I think you heard a little bit of that in Bob's numbers today that uh, our census is up to 402. Um, that's what we expect to occur. We'll continue to monitor this. Uh, we look at our uh, utilization of our ICU beds. We're still in good shape from that perspective. We also just look at the, the number of positive COVID patients in-house and we're able to handle that uh, as well. We do not have a location for our mobile unit uh, currently for this week, so it could be a, a relatively quiet week from our mobile going anywhere, but we continue to work with the health department in relationship to any potential sites they would like us to go to. With that, we will open it up to any questions via chat. Reinstituting the directed health measures is not a decision that Bryan Health can make that would be uh, from our elected officials. Um, we do communicate with them regularly, all hospitals are. So I would trust that our input would be incorporated into those decisions. We continue to monitor ICU bed usage, but as you can imagine, when we're not doing some of these larger cases electives, um, we have ICU capacity. So at this point in time, not concerned about our staffing, not concerned about the number of uh, ventilator patients that we can handle at, at one time. I think we shared with you before, um, if we needed to, we could go up to as many as 200 ICU beds. And that's mean from a ventilator perspective if we needed to. Now staffing would be a challenge as well, but we have, uh, besides our respiratory therapist, our nurses, we also have uh, certified nurse anesthetists that could help. So we have a variety of individuals as well as our, our medical staff, uh, our ICU nurses that continue to monitor these uh, patients. You know, we're, we continue to look at the numbers. Uh, we're still feeling relatively comfortable. We are watching them go up, but as I've mentioned before, they're going up at a small ratio right now. We've looked at our modeling, and I'll tell you, the modeling hasn't been updated for a while, and part of that is just due to the amount of testing that's going on from all the different sources. So you can imagine our health department is receiving results from us, from third-party labs. They're receiving it now through Test Nebraska. So putting that all together and then modeling it again, as they start to see some consistency in the reporting coming back, we'll see a new model. Uh, we still believe that it's this end period of May. We've always talked about around the 16th and 17th, but as you flatten the curve, it pushes that uh, time period out. But as of today, uh, for what we're seeing, we feel comfortable in handling uh, as this grows or continues to, uh, to grow, I would say in a very controlled uh, fashion, we're not seeing that really big uptick in, or surge happen overnight, and that's a really good thing, and that's due to people social distancing, isolating themselves, wearing masks, those are all paying off. The mobile has been deployed uh, for different sessions, in, in Crete, Nebraska to respond uh, partly to, um, we have a hospital in Crete, Chris, as you know, and then um, Smithfield actually asked for some help as well for the last one. So we were there four times where there was an active, obviously spike and breakout. And, and then there was one more mobile testing um, on Friday night here in Lincoln. So I think that's why, why it is at a, such a higher ratio than the other ones. We really do just work with the health department and look at the locations that we can go. If we feel there's a population of uh, folks that we feel aren't getting tested or don't have access to it, uh, then we try to locate there. Or When we knew that there was an, an uptick in positives in Crete, 
We worked with that health department and made the mobile unit uh, available for people. So we're really at the discretion of uh, the health departments. We, we don't want to just be moving the mobile around town because we do have the options with our drive-through and our urgent care that we feel are pretty flexible. But we just want to make sure we're either getting to individuals that can't travel, don't have the transportation, or maybe we're having some language barriers about where testing is available and uh, how they could uh, access it. So that's why we worked with the cultural centers and the uh, health department to do the one that we did on Friday. Temperature screened every time we come into the building. Everybody, unless they're on the press briefing on camera, is masked um, as they enter. Uh, and then the visitor policy, you know, there are some slight variations up for um, a family having a child. Uh, they can have a, a both partners or husband, wife, or whoever the mom selects as the birthing partner in there. And then there are some exceptions for, for pediatric and some extreme ex exceptions for of end of life. And we anticipate those. I mean, they're always under evaluation, but they're going to remain in place until we deem it safe here. Um, in fact, I know a lot of employees watch this, so I'm really addressing the employees rather than maybe the media or the public. But just because you hear something said from Washington, D.C. or the governor's office does not mean we're going to absolutely do it. So we might be a little bit more restrictive um, when it comes to um, you know, the different phasings and what that means for visitors and so forth. We will consult with our medical staff and, and make those decisions.